welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 39. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today will be Five Iron Brony from Brony Time. Yep. Hey, Five Iron, how are you? I'm, I'm doing surprisingly well. I hope uh, everything's fine on your end of the world. Well, it's about to rain and it's in the middle of the afternoon for me. And what time is it for you? How's the weather there? Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, 12.46 a.m. on the East Coast, and the weather is cold. <laughs> well, things here go- are going to be cold for me because it's going to rain. Beats a drought, I suppose. True, true. And for you guys who are wondering, where's Daniel? Um, he can't make it. Well, he is currently away from the computer now, and he can't make it now. Um, he-, he may be joining us later via phone, so if he does come on via phone, we'll get him on and we'll introduce him again later. But anyway, um, Five Iron, before we start, I have to ask you the basic questions and that is, who is your favorite pony? Right now it's Pinkie Pie. It always goes back and forth between Pinkie Pie and Twilight Sparkle, but right now it's definitely Pinkie Pie. I remember there was a Dash there once. Oh, I like Dash too. Uh, Dash used to actually be my least favorite pony, but um, uh, new newfound appreciation. Okay. Uh, but right now, favorite is definitely Pinkie Pie. Oh, huh. okay, okay, okay. That's awesome. Uh, so, how do you like last week's episode? Well, segue. Um, previously, I think my favorite episode I mentioned was Last Roundup. Yes. It has been replaced uh, <laughs> by Too Many Pinkies. Oh, okay. So, why Too Many Pinkies? Because I love that episode. It was fantastic. The, uh, the gags and the... Um, the indirect shout out to the Bronies. Uh, I just I thought it was a very well done episode. It took a, a it took a little a little getting into, but once it got going, the G the G one or G three face. Um, the, you know, look what mm. I can do with my hooves. Uh, great, great, hilarious stuff that I, I would not have thought they would have actually put into an episode. <laughs> that was so funny. I, I love that scene. Like, look, uh, uh, can you make a face as scary as this? Like, oh my god, they even know their their, their previous episode was scary. <laughs> Do you remember the scene where she was jumping into the pond? That was... Uh, sorry, not pond, but a uh, watering hole. That was fun. Oh yeah, when, she's, she, when she dives in and Rainbow is trying to take a nap and she gets to, like just above the water surface and slows down. Yeah, and uh, Rainbow is like, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. That was that was a fun little. Yeah, they finally acknowledged that Pinky is not quite bound by the laws of physics. I love that that's one a picture that's online. Uh, I'm Pinkie Pie. Screw physics. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just love that one, and it's Rainbow Dash is our um what is that word I'm looking for? Avatar? Not really Avatar. Our Mm, mascot? Not really mascot. The word I'm looking for is anomaly, not really... Well, oh gosh. Well, basically what Rainbow Dash is during that time is us asking Pinkie Pie, how did you do that? Oh, it's our analog. Yeah, thank you. Analog. Um, Rainbow Dash was our analog saying that, how did you do that? <laughs> even there, even in their world, nobody understands Pinkie Pie. Yep. Uh, anyway... We have a new episode this week, and before we can go to the new episode, we have to go to news time, and in today's news time, you need money to finish this game. So you play the My Little Pony game on the mobile device, and notice that it costs you money for you to finish the main storyline of the game. So you decided to cheat. Even after cheating, you notice it's not getting you anywhere. So you decided to fork out some cash to finish the game. Um, Have you ever wondered how much it will cost you to finish the storyline? Well, the people at CNET did a breakdown on how much it will cost you. You can read the article in the links below, but Chef Sandy from Bronyville posted a tweet showing how many gems you will need to finish it. Links and pictures can be found in the show notes. So, five. What's, What's your take on this? Uh, my take on this is uh, I have not spent one penny on this game yet, and I do not plan to. Um, I'm still enjoying it. I've, I finally found a, a decent system of getting uh, a moderate amount of bits every time I, I, I jump in on it. But I'm um, I, if if I never get Rainbow Dash or Rarity, I'm okay with that. Um, I, I'm not big on these Farmville style games in the first place. I I, I get really annoyed when it. Uh, it does a, a, a price jump 
like whenever you reclaim an area, I think it starts off at like maybe 2,000 bits and then it goes to 5,000, then 7,500. Uh, I think right now I'm up to 12,500 um, just to reclaim a patch of, of land that I then have to go in and clear out. Oh, God. So um, I'm, I'm not going to put money into it. I just, I, I will not. I mean, I would rather they, uh, Alpha said it earlier, that it, it would be better to you know, put ads into the game you'll make more that way. I'm not going to buy your fictitious currency. Um, <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. You know the funny thing, Five? They already so, have ads in the game. What? It's outrageous! <laughs> I know. No, the thing is, okay, I'm the person that cheat on this game and I didn't really care about the consequences. But the problem is, it took me a while to gain much amount of gems and... It got me nowhere. That's why I kind of gave up, um, fling my hand up and said, oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to play anymore. Even though you have cute ponies, I'm not going to play anymore because this is too hard on me. And the breakdown for all the things that you need to finish the game is uh, Rarity, 90 gems. Fancy Pets, 100 gems. Uh, Quills and Sofa, 100 gems. Lodge Clock Tower, 340 gems. Fleet Foot, 300, sorry, 450 gems. Rainbow Dash, 500 gems. And I think Rainbow Dash has already gone down to 90 gems. Um, Town Hall, 600 gems. Shining Armor and Princess Cadence both at 650 gems. Um, the total amount for 3,480 gems is about $260 to get all of those. Yeah, that's, um, that's borderline criminal. Yeah, I mean, if you want people to pay money, um, we the Bronies don't mind paying three bucks for the game, maybe five bucks even, just for the game. I mean, if you want to charge money, that will be good. I mean, I personally would buy the game for five bucks, man. Yeah, I mean, I have two. And then, I, again, I don't I don't partake of such, you know, town building games. But this, I mean, this, knowing that that's the total just to get everything in the game and at the end of the, spending that money, all you have is the game itself. There's no real benefit. I mean, I understand that. I understand they did it because you know they wanted to make money. And they knew some folks out there would spend that kind of money. Um, sure, sure. But it, 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 in the long run, I think it looks bad on them. I mean, it, they are game love and they are well known for that. But the thing is, like I was with them at the beginning, but now that I've cheated my way, I've done this, I've done that, and I have to say that this game overall, in all honesty, is not my kind of game and. I don't want to play it anymore. Like, you just lost one customer there. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I'm still looking forward to the um, fighting as magic more than anything else. True. The fan-based games. Well, with gaming out of the way, why don't we read some books? Um, five, you want to read this next news topic? Uh, sure, I'll give it a shot here. Uh, the official My Little Pony Friendship is Magic guidebook is due out in 2013. Um, links in the show notes, of course. Uh, the people from Galley Cat have written up an article uh, about the up-and-coming My Little Pony Friendship is Magic guidebook from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. Uh, in the article, it states the book will cost about fourteen ninety nine U.S. and it will be titled My Little Pony, The Elements of Harmony. The book will contain extensive character bios and complete episode guide a map of Equestria, lyrics to all the songs, and a guide to the friendship lessons. I have to say, this is a really intensive book. <laughs> sounds uh, sounds pretty uh, pretty deep. I, I'm sure there'll be plenty, plenty of brownies picking this up. I may even give it a look myself. I want the book because of the whole content thing. Like, um, you get character bios, complete episode guides, map lyrics for all the songs and I know everybody knows I love singing and a guide for friendship lessons was not to pick up yeah it sounds like it's going to have like um, uh, more in-depth details about probably the, the they, they know what's popular out there they know the more popular episodes the more popular characters and it's kind of like it sounds like it's a, a companion's guide to the show I mean true, true. what's not to like but people would say that I can get all this online on the internet for free. Why should oh, I certain, buy this can. book? Sorry, sorry, what do you think? I was going to say, you certainly can, but you can't have it in a neat, nicely bound, fancy colored book in your hands. It's true, it's true. Uh, having a physical object in hand does make all the difference, really. 
on the internet, yes, people can add in info and add out info like Wikipedia. Anybody can do anything with it. So anyway, um, why should we just buy this book instead of the just go online and look at it? Well, it's fun to have a bound book like what Fire Island said, a companion guide to the show. Yeah, and you know, there's a certain aspect of you know, it's a collector's item. Yeah, it's true. Everybody loves the collector's item. And from what they say about the map, it's the first printable map. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's a different map from what they gave us in the posters. But, well, if it's a different map, it'll be awesome. Probably more detailed. Maybe have like a street view kind of uh, build out to it. Ooh, those kind of map on Ponyville. I, I like, I like. Anyway, um, it'll be coming out in 2013 in the spring, I think I remember, right? Spring or summer? I, I don't really remember. Sounds right. So anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And what do you know? We have Daniel Anthony on. Hi, guys. Where have you been? Oh, I'm in Penang, up north, big family driver. Oh, you sound like you're in a telephone booth. Are you in a telephone booth? No, I'm in a library talking on my cell phone. You need to be extra quiet. Twilight won't be happy with that. Well, I'm the only person here, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, moving on to the next news topic. Bad Seeds Hard Rock version exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. New song stuck in your head? Can't blame you. It's a really good song. And what could make a good song better? A hard rock cover version of the song. Daniel Ingram posted something on his Facebook. In the post, he said that special thanks goes out to David Corman for his production work. One day, maybe, we'll be able to release the original hot rock version we did. Smiley face. Links will be in the show notes. So, who is addicted to this song? Because I know I am. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty good song. Then I'm going to complain. I haven't heard it yet because I've been so busy. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to spoil this show for you. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that from the latest episode? Yep. Great. So, um... I haven't seen it yet. Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, the song from the articles I read, it was an homage to the late... Um, sorry, not late, but to those classic cartoons like Archie's and uh, Scooby-Doo kind of songs. And even Josie and the Pussycats, right? Five? Yeah. My, my favorite one was, was always Jabberjaw, but um, yeah, it had that kind of um, mid-story montage slash um, not quite narrative song to the midst of it. I kind of expect to see them running in and out of different doors <laughs> halfway through. Oh, that's Scooby-Doo. Oh, those youngins don't, won't understand old classic cartoons. Mm-hmm. All the needless violence you can find <laughs> in the world. Hey. Tom and Jeff ruled it all. Hey, well... Uh, we were kids, we were young back then, and look how we grew up to be. I know, I did great. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, a hard rock version of this song. What, 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 in your opinion, how would it sound like? Okay, I heard a spoiler last night when I was browsing on Twitter, which made me close the window. Is that Scoodaloo had a drum solo? Um, not really. It was just a bongo, really. Okay. And that was near the end, man. <laughs> I could picture her like some kick-ass costume, like how she dressed up in the Kitty Mark Chronicles. Was it? No, what was that episode name? I don't know, but... Showstoppers? Yeah, Showstoppers yeah. dressed up in that, hard, that that kind of rocker costume going nuts on the drum set. Oh, well, um, this wasn't that, but a, it's going to be an interesting watch. Well, for you, it's going to be an interesting watch. I just love the song and I want to hear the rock version of this song. I think people like, um, who does rock covers? Because I'm really bad. Jesse Carlson? He does ska. Ooh, a ska version of this song would be fun. Jesse, if you're listening, I want it. I want it. Make it happen. (laughs) Yes, I agree. I support this. (laughs) Okay. I was just saying, there's Bronified and there's, uh, who else does rock? Mm, Yelling at Cats? Yelling at Cats? Um, Acoustic Brony. Yeah, Mendo Acoustic Brony. Yeah, they do. They do also... Okay, um, anyway, let's move on to MLP Facts of the Week. So all of these informative facts can be found at twitter.com slash MLP Facts. So guys, did you know that Daring Do is a pun on Daring Do, which means brave, adventurous, and often reckless actions? 
Yeah, I kind of picked up on that. I didn't. If that's the case, my name should be YOLO. <laughs> you and your YOLOs. Seriously. I'm probably understanding that we're not going to say YOLO anymore. Mm. We did? Sure. Okay. YOLO is just so 2012, man. It's still 2012. Oh, you're living in the past. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, did you know the ending of the season 2 pilot is a homage to Star Wars? Yeah. And there's a link to the video. It'll show you side by side view on the end. And oh my, was it, uh, I wouldn't say carbon copy, but uh, it looked really close. Even with the eye wink. Yeah, I saw the wink and I was like, oh wait, that's from somewhere. I just need to find where. (laughs) And... Five, being a Star Wars fan, what do you think? They lost me at midichlorians. <laughs> this one was episode one, if I, no, this one was episode four, if I remember right. Two. Two, really? Two. This one was the one that they did when they run the trench in the planet destroyer, the Death Star, if I remember right. Uh, let's see, that would be episode four, four New Hope. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, love, I love a good uh, parody slash homage. Yeah, well, if you like Paradise so much, did you know? I love doing this. Spike's no it, line in A Dog and Pony Show is a reference to Star Wars again. Still more convincing than, you know. Part 3 or Part 2? Oh, sorry, Part 3 or Part 4? I'm sorry? Yeah, I was convincing which one? Part 3 or Part 4? I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, the, that, that, the, the whole Vader not being Vader and crying. Um was episode three. Yeah. So there was a similar one by Scooter Blue about I think in Kingdom Hearts Chronicles she also went no! uh, I think you're right. There's a lot of no's in this show. Yeah. Someone should make that compilation. That's very n- emotional. Yep. As in Anakin's um no's is more of No, my paycheck is ending. Spikes <laughs> uh, Spikes one is, no, Rarity is gone. And Scootaloo is, no, it's all girly girl talk. Don't want. Do not want. <laughs> anyway, those were MLP Facts of the Week. And all those facts can be found at twitter.com slash MLP Facts. And if you want Star Wars Facts, um, I got no idea where you can find them. Maybe twitter.com slash Star Wars Facts. Blogspot.com. That is a great blog. Where? The Death Star PR is the Death Star Public Relations Department. <laughs> well, okay, if you want Star Wars talk, go there. That sounds fun. Okay, so next up is season three reviews. Um, this is going to be really. Re- Why not you just uh, listen to I can't me? Keep the discussion anymore. <laughs> Why don't you just do something and we'll talk about it? Or you could just listen in and get it spoiled by us. <laughs> Okay, cut for a second. Uh, just, I'm going to mute the mic and I'm going to check because I have a couple of shout-outs to make, so I'll be right back. All right. Just... Is he gone? I think oh, he is. <laughs> yes, let's talk about him. But anyway, before we talk bad about him, let's review this episode. And in this week's episode is uh, MLP Season 3, Episode 4, Bad Seeds. Um, in this episode, the Cutie Mark Crusaders are dealt with a bully and they have to find a way to overcome it. Am I right? Yeah, it was um, it is one of those things that we were hinted toward um, at the beginning, or just you know prior to the season's beginning, is that they were going to have um, an episode that dealt with bullies. And I, I'm going to be honest, when I first heard that, I kind of cringed because I thought of all those you know Saturday morning specials where they have a theme and they talk about you know this or that or drugs or you know true you know, those, stuff. those PSA episodes. And I have to agree with you when I heard that, I thought. Oh no, not this, because how could you handle this well? There's no possible way that you could do this well. Prove me wrong. Love it. Yeah, I mean, they they did it in a pretty good way. I mean, I'm, I'll admit, it was, it, this is not one of my favorite episodes, but there was enough um, attention to detail in this that I, I did not dislike the episode. It didn't turn into a mere do well for me. True, true. Um, for me, if I were to com- give a ranking for season three, all of them, I would say this would be place near number three for me. Um, looking at season three, um, uh, that's all right. And in the season, it's bottom for me. I, I enjoyed the Crystal Kingdom 
you know, just under, you know, too many pinky pies. So we're 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 on uh, we're on the opposite here. Like uh, the season opener, one and two is going to be top, and for you, it's going to be uh, too many pinkies, and plus it's going to be bad seeds. While for me, it's going to be bad seeds, then too many pinkies. Okay. Okay. I mean, we both have our opinion, and well, we just only have four episodes, and well, somebody has to be at the bottom for now. Yeah, it is way too early to even you know. Uh, there's a lot more season left to go. True, true. But anyway, um, let's go on to this review. Um, it starts out with Apple Bloom trying to find clothes to meet her cousin. And the funny thing is, the room. Is this the first time that we had a close look at Apple Bloom's room? Um, there was a more detailed look than from, uh, I think, Cutie Box. Because you see her room just for a moment in that episode uh, when she's, you know, overcome with a tap dancing fever or whatever. <laughs> Um, but, you know, they make reference to, you know, you know, your cousin's supposed to sleep in here too, and she's destroyed the room trying to find something to wear to go pick up her cousin. And I don't think she ends up wearing anything, you know, as they typically, except for her bow, which, you know, true, the true. parties typically don't wear clothes. <laughs> yep, true. I, I like the Apple Jack line said, Rarity, we don't usually wear clothes. <laughs> yeah. But um, funny enough, um, did you remember the first shot of Apple Bloom coming out of the closet? <laughs> uh that's so wrong on so many levels. But um, I, I can't say that I do. Okay, um uh, in that scene where, where he, when she came out, she was wearing a kind of um sailor outfit gown uh, those I must miss that. Yeah. And I think I seen a fan art of it somewhere online, but I can't remember where. Which is pretty interesting. I don't know who came first, this or that. But overall uh, it's, it's the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean one person's fashion sense can be another person's too. So anyway, um, after Apple Jack said that her cousin was a blank flank, like, sorry, a blank flank like her, she automatically said, "I'll meet you at the train station. Going to get the Crusaders." Yep. Intro song. Go to train station, yep. and wow, <laughs> um, in that scene, you can see Scooter Lou's eyes derp. <laughs> Did she fall down or something? No. When she was fluttering, her eyes were derping like. Um, I would say it's the same eyes that Twilight did when she was looking for a book of quills. But instead of motioning one way, they were derping off. I did not notice that. I was, I was more impressed with her uh, ability to Flutter? somewhat fly there just for a moment. True, true. I mean, um, Lauren did say that Scooter Lou may be special in her own way, but from this scene... It don't looks like it. She can fly, I think, or flutter. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe. Okay, like from episode one to now, Twilight has progressed in more and more complex magic, with the exception of the whole turning something into an orange in the <laughs> last episode. Um, maybe Scootaloo is having similar progressions with um, her abilities. True, true, and also don't forget, um, Sweetie Belle. She's showing signs of magic. Yes, I noticed that too. That was that was a new one for her because she. I don't. I can't recall her ever really using magic prior. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. And no, the only fillies that I know that did magic was snips and snails. Well, actually, snails with the <laughs> touchlight trick. Yeah. So I mean, after that, they meet up with Bab Bab Seeds, the name. Oh my god, the name Bab Seeds, and invited her to be a member of the CMCs. Being not impressed or being nervous with the whole situation, I would be too if three total strangers came up to me saying, hey, join this, hey, join this, hey, join this, hey, join this. And, um, well, to impress her, they took her to the barn to show their float and came along Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon to make fun of them. So um, before I go on further with this, um, anybody, did you notice that how... Bab seeds always reacted negatively when somebody talked about flanks. Oh yeah, yeah, she was uh, uh, noticeably uh, self-conscious whenever that topic came up. True, I mean, those were subtle hints that she was not comfortable with the situation. And also, did you notice her size was a, was a bit bigger than the normal CMCs at the start of the show? Yeah, she um, uh, looked a little bit heavier than the others. I uh, just you know the, they they have different you know variations of the body style like if you're uh, using the pony creator you have different sliders you can adjust and you can tell that I mean if you took the 
punish the, the veins if you took the silhouette of the uh, CNCs, they look almost interchangeable. <laughs> true, except true. For, you know, except for, you know, like unicorn horn or wings. It's just add in, add out, like Twilight. <laughs> yeah. But, but on a serious matter, um, if you guys that uh, noticed the size of Babs, uh, Babs seeds, uh, near the end, her body size goes to the CMC size. So um, keep an eye out for that and, well, take a take a look. You'll notice all the... Changeling. Oh, no. Anyway, um, move on. Diamond Tiara, Silver Spoon, uh, Mock the CMCs, and Bad, Bad Seeds goes to the dark side. Another Star Wars reference. Yep. Awesomeness. And, um, well, I'm trying to keep this short. After the whole thing, a song starts... I'm not going to sing it now, maybe later, I don't know. And a lot of good things happen in the song. Do you remember anything that could be worth mentioning? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, the animation was very, very fluid. We had some uh, uh, non-stock um, animation run cycles, uh, like running toward the camera. And then uh, when they got to a certain point, the uh, ankle rotated uh, 90 degrees, Um they had a fun little scene, like popping in, like you mentioned, the Archie and, and uh, Scooby Doo comics, where they're popping in and out of different areas. Uh, they go into a theater, and there's certain background ponies in the theater. Um, uh, they drop in and out of uh, the scene, popping up in impossible placements. <laughs> and I also remember the one that when they were at Carol's Sub Boutique, or oh, maybe another shop. I don't remember. Um, the CMCs were dressed as the three little piggies, and Bab Seeds was the big red wolf. Yep, yep, another, another fun little joke there. Uh, lots of lots of little nods. Um, I, I mean, if I can digress back to some earlier, I was going to mention when they were waiting at the train station, and you mentioned how um, you could see uh, Scooby derping a little bit. The, the, the part that caught my attention was Applejack's face <laughs> with the CMCs around her. It's as a parent, it reminded me so much of you know, sometimes you love your little darlings, but it's like, I can you just settle down? And they're all three just kind of running around her, and she's like, just <laughs> sit still for a moment. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. <laughs> uh, but back to the song. Yeah, it was a very good song. It, it has remix and uh, cover written all over it. Yep, yep. Especially if the song has already been written for a rock version. Like, I want that one. Daniel Ingram, if you're listening, I want that one out now. Uh, I hope he listens. If he does, that's cool. Anyway, um, moving on. The CMC plan on sabotaging bad, bad, bad apple, I mean bad seeds with a booby trap float. And this scene, the beginning of this scene makes me giddy with joy. Tell us why. Because of the A team team song. Almost. Uh, almost. Because when I heard the da da da, uh, I squeak because I love that intro. Yeah, you know, it's it's, uh, it's 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 up there with um. It, it's all, we keep going back to Star Wars. It's almost up there with the uh, the John Williams you know, Star Wars opening score. The first few notes, you know exactly what it is. True, true. And also, if you're a kid of the early eighties and nineties, um. Airwolf, like Rider, all those songs. Yep, remember both those. Yep. If you don't know, go ask your daddy and mommy about Airwolf and Night Rider, and they say it was good shows. Don't hassle the half. <laughs> um, after yeah. after the A Team thing, uh, they um, set the booby trap, and well, as planned, um, trap Bab seats into entering the float, and once their evil scheme has been planned out. Applejack came to them and said, Oh, that's nice of you to allow Babsies to drive your cart. Babsies got bullied in Manhattan. Guilt trip here. How do? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, wonderful, wonderful timing there. Timing! But seriously, um, if you were in that position, how? what would you do differently? What, what would you do? If I was in that position? Yes. How the heck did I get here? <laughs> Where are these talking ponies around me um in, in that situation i mean honestly i, w- I would have been with what was the sweetie bell kept saying we need to talk to somebody and the other two were like no we can't yeah um I, that's probably how i would have been like look look this is this is not good she's here for a couple of weeks and she's being a total jerk um we we need to talk to someone then of course you know she's she's working the ink what are you a snitch you know yeah so, it's true 
is a tough spot to be in. Um, it's true. It's true. I mean, um, being that young and being in, influenced by peer pressure and one oh, it's also a peer pressure episode. Awesome. Um, and being influenced by peer pressure, it can it kind of can be sorry. It can it can be hard for the youngins to understand what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, I mean, I've I've, I've worked with kids for years. Uh, I'll give a little insight there. I, I've worked with kids in school settings and summer camps and tutoring sessions, um, and it's pretty accurate. I mean, I, of course, it's talking ponies, but it's pretty accurate to how you know the social aspect will kick in. You've got one person put in a situation with a some kids that might fall into the uncool category and then some kids to the cool category or you can do the same thing with the have and have nots and you know she reacted in a manner which it was almost like a self-survival thing she had we learned that she had seen um, or she had been the the, the target of bullying and, and desiring not to fall back into that pattern she, mm-hmm. she makes a, uh, a survival move to go to the stronger quote unquote stronger side to not be pulled or not to be the target again um, and, and you see that you see that in, in real world social situations when um, to avoid being you know, the recipient of being bullied this, they will often become the bully it's true it's true like you guys said on your show with the brony hater thing like he is at the bottom of the totem pole and when somebody is even lower than that he'll be the bully the aggressor yeah and it's unfortunate because I mean I, that that situation is frustrating to me because it is just one guy trying to be a bully, and I don't want to give that too much airtime because it's quite frankly not worth airtime. True, it's true. But um, it, there's a, there's definitely a parallel there. Yeah, um, it's true. I mean, when bullying comes up in any show, it's always a hard thing to sell. Like, how would the story be? Because um, I've grown up with cartoons and i never seen a cartoon that dealt with it well. That's how I'm going to say it. Never de- dealt with it well. It's always the bully get his comeuppance and that's about it. Nothing more. There's no tale to tell. Like, the bully is always the bad guy, never the victim. Yeah, I mean, they again, it, whenever you have a topical episode like this, it's going to be, you got to put extra effort to not make it suck. Yeah, it's true. Who was the writer for this one? Because um, the story for this one, I have to say, um, it's really good because of the topic. Because writing a bully episode, especially with this one, PSA and all, it's really, really hard. Yeah, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, whenever we come to a, a topic episode like this, it, it draws me back to a. <laughs> an episode of the French Prince of Bel Air I saw years ago and uh, apparently in the sitcom world when you hit a topic episode it usually signals the end of your your, your month. I don't think this is the case of My Little Pony but there was an episode where uh, Will jumped in front of Carlton and ended up being shot for him and it was a you know the, the whole, whole, whole purpose was uh, an anti-gun or an anti-gun or a gun control oh. episode which show was this again? This was Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, that one. Yeah, I remember that yeah, one. You know what I'm talking about. They're at an ATM and a guy pulls a gun and, you know, it ends up with Will in the hospital and, and Carlton has a gun. He's going to go after the guy. And, you know, Will Smith is like, you owe me. You owe me. I took a bullet for you. You owe me. And, you know, <laughs> just, you know pushing the, the whole. And again, it was, you know, in Rush's track, it was a very emotional episode. It was also very heavy handed, you know, gun control, anti revenge episode if you can call it that um, yeah it's true I mean it took a dark it, turn for that kind of show really it, it did and th- that was toward the end of that series run I think they were year 8 or 9 mm. at that point it's true and the writer for this episode was Cindy Morrow she also did Hurricane Fluttershy and let's see what else she did Um, Apple F- Family Family Appreciation Day and uh, Read It and Whip well, that's just a strong episode right there yeah, did she need anything in season one? Oh, she did win the wrap up. <laughs> oh, well, she wins the episode. She wins. She wins. Oh, no wonder she did bullying well because she also did Griffin the brush off. Ah, well. Honestly, I mean, of the two, I mean, I like them both, but I don't know. I don't know which one I like better if you compare the two because there's definitely you know elements that we like from both. Yes. Um, yeah. Let's just put the song aside. 
and compare it. Because if we want to include the song, I have to say this season three Bad Apples is a winner because of the song. That's about it. Yeah, the song the song definitely gives an edge. Um, honestly, take the song out of it, and this one may still win over Griffin because Griffin was, you know, it, it's you know how do you how did be how did uh, kill to get her come up? It's in that one. Yeah, she was, true. She was the she was embarrassed. She was you know uh, she was the target of not necessarily the target, but she was hit by all these pranks and it embarrassed her. We don't learn much more about Gilda other than she knows Rainbow Dash from, you know, years ago. Let's just um, say college. Yeah, we'll call it college, whatever. Um, but, you know, we don't know why Gilda is a jerk. Could be, yes, yes. I mean, all those yes. um, backgrounds, we don't really know. But um, one thing I noticed in that episode, there were a lot of reference to old Hannah Barbera, Hannah Barbera. Oh gosh, I can't speak. Hannah Barbera cartoons, like uh, Pepe Le Pew's jump and how Rainbow Dash keeps escaping, but end up getting caught by Pinkie Pie and whatnot. Remind, reminded me of Pepe Le Pew, or from all those Looney Tunes cartoons. Yep. And speaking of Looney Tunes cartoons, in this one bad apple, um, we were also homage to old um, Hannah Barbera cartoons also. I, I think Cindy Morrow knows how to write those kind of shows. It, th- there's, a, there's a fine art uh, that is an homage. I mean, you can do a, a, just a direct rip-off, which is lame, but this isn't like that. You know, there were some very nice tips of the hat, as it were, toward the A-team and um, the Hannibal Bear stuff and the Looney Tunes stuff throughout the whole series so far. Good stuff. It's true, it's true. I mean, okay, um, let's try and wrap this up fast because we've been talking too much about this and um, <laughs> speeding up, they chased down the ap- golden apple, got into Pinkie Pie's lettuce mobile, <laughs> let us <is> in. <laughs> oh, Pinkie Pie, you and your puns. Chase after the golden apple, let this crash, Chase them by foot and push Bab- Bab's apple out, Bab's seat out, and kind of save the day and became the hero. If you look at it from a outside point of view, you agree? Well, hero maybe stretching it. Um, unintentional martyr, maybe? No, not in that. No. I mean, if you do look at it from uh, an outsider's point of view, without knowing what's going on, the CMCs kind of save Bab's life. I think. Shave, uh, how about save her from further embarrassment? Yes, indeed, indeed. And it, yes, they yes. were kind of the hero. But near the end where they talk about it, they say that they were bullying her or trying to get back at her. Oh, yes, yeah. They became what they what what they dis, what they despised. They they became like Silver Spoon and, and Diamond Tiara. True, true. And all in all, it kind of works well for this episode near the end. And, like, any joke, um, stretch it as long as possible with how would you say a friend, confidant, amigo, like, oh man, that list is long. Uh, you know, one thing I noticed, and, and this is just, uh, this was kind of funny, when she's reading, when uh, it was Sweet Bill's reading to those words, I don't know, maybe this is a Canadian pronunciation or something, but when she got to the word A-L-L-Y, she didn't say ally, she said alley. Uh, really? Huh, I need to yeah. re-listen to that. Um, I, again, maybe it was intentional, but it made me laugh. Because <laughs> that's just a tricky word to spell. Ally? I think, I, I, how do I spell ally? Ally. It's like ally. Oh, yeah. I, I think I may have heard something like that. But it could be a play on words like how Sweetie Belle is still young and that word is really hard for a youngin to say out, maybe? Yep, I can see that easily. Oh, well. the, the, the show is, when it comes to stuff like that, the show is very, very smart. True. I mean, if there's a fault in somebody, especially, let's just say, um, Sweetie Belle, uh, her voice actress said something like a boot or, example, ally or, yeah, a word, ally, and she says Ally. I mean, I think they do, they can uh, retake that seriously. Um, uh, they call it, what do they call it? I forgot the official term about it. Um, well, they do. They can do retakes of it. Say, 
ally, not ally, ally. They can do that, but I think they left it in just to have fun. Yeah, possibly. I mean, and, and we, we can assume that they do make mistakes because in the season two finale, uh, Tara Strong instantly said, um, everybody, Every... I think you said every pony one time. Oh, yeah, I, I heard of that. Do you remember when was it? In which scene? I, th- I think it was when she was in the, the house with uh, Shining Armor just before he went and spoke to Cadence in private. Mm. I think that's when it was. Um, it's, it's been a while since I've seen that. Oh, okay. I mean, I need to double check that because I've heard a few parts where they said body instead of ponies. But eh, it's the spur of the moment when you're trying to be serious and whatnot. Ah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, um, then in the chat, interestingly enough, said um, she said sneaking up on people. That's what it was. Yeah, she has a way of sneaking up on people. Oh my! People exist! <laughs> Lara! Human orchestra. Fact! <laughs> so anyway, um, on to the end of the episode. Um, Babsy joins the CMC, goes off to Manhattan to open a branch of the CMCs in Manhattan, which is cool, and Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara came along again, and kind of tried to bully the CMCs, and Babs stood up for them, and in the end, it's what you're going to do is tell your parents. Somebody is being mean to you. You go to the authority. True, true. Babsy, never to be heard of again. <laughs> I hope she gets a mention somehow because that character is... She's just like the Braeburn. That's all I have to say. Yeah, we haven't seen Braeburn but once, have we? Yep, yep. It's, it's kind of a pity because Braeburn is kind of a cool character. <laughs> yeah, he went too bad. A little bit of a goof but um he's all right true true but anyway um so that was the well not not really review but kind of a storytelling of it well let's just keep it a review so out of five stars what would you give it again it wasn't my favorite i'd give it somewhere between two and a half and three hmm, okay for me i like it because of the song i'll give it a four a solid four because like i said there were some Things in there that really attracted me, like the A Team song, the part where Scootaloo hovered, and the part where Sweetie Belle spark on her horn. I mean, those are those are some of the little things that I noticed that kind of caught my attention and interest me. And well, that's our review for season three, episode four. Um, what was the episode called again? Yes, um, one bad apple. Hope you guys like it because I suck at reviewing stuff. And let's get. Dan back on. Dan, you're going to be in. Looks like he'll be away for a while. So anyway, Five, let's talk about your show. For people who are not familiar with you, and this is the first time that they're listening to you, um, who you are and what do you do? Um, who, who am I and who's my daddy? <laughs> I didn't say that, but why not? Um, uh, yeah, it, it, if this is the first time you're hearing me, I apologize. I couldn't find a better guest, and I ain't come up with him. Um, uh, my name is Five Iron, and I am one half of the uh, Brony Time podcast. Um, I, my, my cohort is uh, Alpha Brony, and we do a uh, weekly podcast um, where we talk about ponies. Awesome. So basically like what I do. Pretty much, yeah. So when do you guys record? Um, typically we record on Saturday evening or Saturday night around 10 p.m. Eastern, roundabouts. Oh, okay. So basically we, you either record in the evening or the afternoon. And when do your show get posted? Um, we try and have a pretty quick turnaround. We can usually get it posted within 24 hours. Um, uh, around about the next day, 10, 11, 12, something like that, typically. Oh, okay. And interesting enough, Dan is here. Hello, Dan. How are you? Hi guys, yeah. So, I do. oh, Mr. I Robotic, but I think I can manage. I thought you were out most of the time and didn't listen to us talk bad about you. <laughs> yeah, I heard that part. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, anyway, what, um, you <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, five. How many episodes have you done for your show, Rooney Time? Uh, well, we just recorded our eleventh episode. And um, we're actually taking next week off, so we're going to have a, a little bit of downtime, but we're going to come back and do episode 12 um, in two weeks. 
So, yeah. Oh, any reason why there's a vacation that you're taking? Christmas holiday, maybe? Uh, well, no, it's too early for that. It's actually, it's actually my anniversary. And, oh, uh, awesome! Uh, Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, Thank you, thank you. Now we're we're gonna uh, take an evening and just you know, go out, go out to dinner, or maybe see a movie, some some kind of nice. Um, but you know, th- again, we've done eleven weeks straight of uh, our show, and um, yeah, it's good to take a break every now and then. I don't want it to be an extended break, but um, I, I can agree with that, man. Because me doing this show for thirty nine episodes straight is getting a to- getting its toll on me. Uh, Wait, hold on. You've done thirty nine weeks straight, no break. You guys have done this 39 weeks straight with a break. Well, Norman has done this 39 weeks straight. Yep. 39 oh, weeks straight with including special episodes. If you do include the special episode, it's already up to 40-something. Normie, I'm going to be very honest with you. I, I don't think that's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for the show! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, true. It is unhealthy, but hey, if it entertains people, I'm in for it. Even I run a podcast and I've done 50, but I skipped one week. That was <laughs> <laughs> the record. That's, that's a lot of talking. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I wish you well. And as always, we are a fan of the show. And if you love us, you should love them too because they're good. And if you would like to hear me talking, I sometimes appear on this show as a special guest host. A panelist. Yeah, panelist. We call it special guest hosts, they call it panelists. Someone would lunch, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, I think it's a bit late for you, right? So what is it, um, almost two? Uh, yeah, about, about quarter till two in the morning. I'm, I'm, I'm holding okay right now. Okay, um, either we could end here or, well, poor Dan just came in. So why not we just do this discussion for a short while? Um... Who is your favorite pony and why is that character your favorite pony? Because um, in our group, we did this conversation about why do you like X pony and does it have to do with your personality? Mm, yes, yes. News pony actually started that. Yeah, it's true. And I didn't really answer that one because I want to save it for this one because I know that we didn't have a guest for this week. <laughs> so five, why is Pinkie Pie your favorite and do you and her mingle well or do you have the same attitude as her or do you have the total opposite of her I, I can't speak to a personality either I can't speak to my personality line but I will say that she is one of my top two favorites because I do like that randomness I, um, you know, the fourth wall breaking the, the physics defying um, silliness uh, it, it's very appealing it's fun hmm that's interesting because one of uh, all... Sorry, go ahead. What happened? No, I was saying that uh, because we took this from another angle and could people identify their favorite pony by identifying who, what kind of personalities they would like to see in their soulmate? Their soulmate? Wow, going that far, really? I mean, or somebody, what they want to see in a partner or a friend. Huh. Well. Soulmate in the case of a lot of people like me. Oh, okay. Well, for me personally, I look at it from the standpoint of... The personality-wise, like, for me, my favorite is Fluttershy. And when I see Fluttershy, she's so cute and she's so adorable. From that standpoint alone, and we're, since we're talking about animes or cartoons here, um, I find it attracting. Mm, okay. I, I like Fluttershy also because of her 180 attitude towards stuff at the Grand Galloping Gala when she went psychotic. I just love that characteristic, really. And what about you, Dan? Um, okay, the, the part of the discussion that happened, I also saw this as uh, another thing, other than being maybe a soulmate or a best friend, if you were to move to Equestria, who would be your most likely roommate or housemate, some point you could stay with? Because, um, how do you say, I could picture myself staying in Shibuku Corner because it's the kind of place I would like to work at, mm-hmm. given my profession. I don't know, man. When, here's the thing. When everybody says, oh, if you go to Equestria, where you want to live, they, the thing is, you always go for the main six first because yeah, I, want to, I want to mingle with the popular kids. Problem is, they might not want to be with you. <laughs> no, I'm saying that the way people identify their um, best pony or favorite pony could be also through that kind of factor of identifying where they want, where they, 
most probably they could live with and put up with that. Some people just love Dorothy so much they want to live with her. I don't know about that, but personally for me, I'm going to take... I guess to love Dorothy so much, she wants to live with her. I can wait. She oh. was definitely <laughs> Rebecca Starborn. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, um, like I was saying, for me, if I got this question, like if I were to go to Equestria and who I want to live with, I'm going to take uh, Final Draft's answer and you're crazy, man. Okay, fine. <laughs> but seriously, um, the thing is, like, maybe I have this personality of um, I still can remove myself from that kind of thinking because... It's just a show for me. I, I understand that, but what, we're try- what I'm trying to explore is how do people pick their favorite of the main six? Because I thought of this as some, pe- some people just say, I just want to, you know, you know the kind of same old thing, especially if I drop said this also, how many of just go and hug the crap out of Fluttershy because, you know. <laughs> no, but the thing, the thing is, is those, those kind of situation is um, what we know from the show and whatnot, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to a whole other discussion to itself, like, I, I don't want to go into it now because of the quality. And, well, I mean, that, that is, we'll, we'll just save that for another discussion. That will be fun to talk about. Okay. So, anyway. um. So, um, Five Iron, how about you? How did you actually land on Pinkie Pie? Was it more of a, a you desire that kind of, you, des- you see, look for that kind of personality in a person? Or do you share that personality? Or do you think you're compatible with that personality? Um, um, I have a category. Uh, for for me, the the two my two favorites I always go back to my wife and my daughter. Um, uh, my my wife is very much like Twilight Sparkle. She is super super organized. Um, she attacks problems head on. She tries to find solutions and how to fix things. Um, uh, my my daughter is just a ball of fun and silliness. So that's where it comes from for me. I, I guess that's. That's why I can probably answer it. Okay, so you're living the life of a brony then because you have Twilight and Pinkie Pie with you all the time. <laughs> Minus the psychosis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the friendship letter every week and the chaos and the... Uh... Yeah, I mean, well, sounds to me like you have a, you're having a brony ball. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, um, from, from what I understand, you're living the perfect brony life then. That was a really good discussion. So we have some ideas for what I'm going to talk next week. So, um, well, why not we just save that for later and end the show? Because yeah. I don't want to keep 5 Iron up too late because it's already almost 2 a.m. for you. Oh, my gosh. So if any, of you are, if any of you are listening, if you have your own opinion on why you chose a particular character, not necessarily the main six and your favorite, based on a different criteria than what we just discussed, do you feel free to email us and tell us about it. Our email is thembsshow at gmail.com. Yes, also, you jumped the gun so fast. Anyway, um, so shout out. One topic. One topic. <laughs> Was it? One topic. <laughs> not really, because that goes to... Um, contact us and that will be a great thing to do but anyway let's move on to shout outs and my shout out is to you Five Iron thank you for coming on in on such short notice and for inviting me on your show as a panelist again uh, well, no, we, we always enjoy having you guys on no problem and then any shout outs yes I have one and this is to YouTube user Tony J4 T-A-W-N-Y-J-A-Y-4 you can find his link in the show notes to you Thank you so much for making that PMV of Twilight Sparkle style. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, well, did you fake the video? Of course, of course. Okay, I'll look. I'll, I, I... Plus one like and fake, all three together. Okay, cool. Then I'll look at it in your account then, because <laughs> you don't have access to the show docs. <laughs> 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 and also, five, do you have any shouts to give out to? Uh, I see. I'll, I'll give my shout out to. Uh, I guess I'll give it to Alpha. I guess. He yeah, is a good I, compadre, I, Ellie. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll give it to Alpha. I guess I. He's okay. I mean, if I had to be stuck with a host, I guess I could. I could. I'll give it to him. He's he's not so bad. <laughs> oh, he is a good Ellie. <laughs> yeah, he's a very good Ellie. <laughs> and oh, I almost forgot. I want to give another shout out to. Galis Mama? Dizzy, Dizzy Cat? Ah, uh, yes. Dizzy, Dizzy what? No, I forgot. Dizzy Kitten, I believe. 
yeah, Dizzy Kitten. Um, she and me have been talking on Twitter, and well, she does strike up good conversation. Awesome. Oh yeah, she's really cool. And do follow her. She's a new brony in the fandom, and she could use the attention. I believe her. I believe her Twitter handle is Gally's Mama, and uh, her and her husband Moo are hilarious. Indeed. And if I remember right, they're already in season, almost finished with season one. Uh, roundabouts there, yeah. Awesomeness. And well, those were the shoutouts. So guys, if you want to contact us, you can always contact us uh, at the MBS show at gmail.com. And you can also reach us on Twitter. Um, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. And I'm at Norman Sanzo. And you also can reach Daniel at Sing Pinky. And Five, what's your Twitter? Uh, I am on Twitter at 5 Iron Brownie. All one word, no spaces. All right. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And also, like our Facebook page. Please give us a positive review and like our Facebook page. You won't regret it. Please? So anyway, I've been Norman Sanzo. I think I've been 5 Iron. And Daniel Anthony was somewhere around here. Um, he's lost in the eater. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was so really really sweet a new friend to have and it seemed like such a treat but then we found the truth she's just a bully from the east she went from babs yeah to a bully and a beast everywhere we turn she's just a step ahead babsy babsy what we gonna do got a bully on our tail gotta hide we gotta bail babsy babsy if she's after you gotta run we gotta flee gotta hurt don't you see? Bad seed, bad seed, you're just a bad, bad seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hiding from a bully, we know it isn't right. But the cutie Mark Crusaders, we are looking for a fight. Oh, she'll go home soon, then we'll have some peace again. But for now, we're staying out of her way till then. Everywhere we turn, she's just a step ahead. What we gonna do? Got a bully on our tail, gotta hide, we gotta bail. Bad seed, bad seed, if she's after you. Gotta run, we gotta flee, gotta hurry, don't you see? Why so mean? Why so crude? Why so angry? Why so rude? Can't you be nice? Can't we be friends? Isn't it sad? Is this how it all ends? Bad seed, bad seed, she's just a bad Just a bad, bad scene. If you don't know, go ask your daddy and mommy about Airwolf and Knight Rider, and they say it was good shows. Don't hassle the off. <laughs> oh, who did um, who did uh, Airwolf? I don't really remember. I think or I, I want to say Ernest Borgnine was one of the characters on there. Mm, I don't really remember. All I all I could remember was um, he's looking for his brother, and other than that, good helicopter fight. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. I honestly can't remember anything about Airwolf other than they had this, you know, ridiculous theme song. But I mean, I don't know the the backstory to it. But I'm sitting there thinking helicopters are not very fuel efficient. <laughs> it's expensive to fuel those things. How do they manage that? Not to mention the you know heavy ordnance in a civilian setting. So <laughs> I think we're digressing to another show. Anyway, uh, back to ponies.